All right, Flutter just got forked and it's serious this time. Now I do agree that you already know that Flutter has got so many forks already, but these are the forks which has an intention of either contributing into the main repository or just to experiment with the things. People all the time contribute in such big repositories, open source repositories. For example, people want to send some bug fixes. Some people even do send readme updates and typo fixes as well, although they are very annoying, but people do send them. And Flutter is one of these always in hot water controversial uh, kind of a framework in the mobile ecosystem because in the cross-platform ecosystem there are not too many competitions either it's react native or either it's flutter yes there are other side ones as well which doesn't take too much of the market share but these are the two major ones and what this fork is saying is actually worth talking about and that's why this video in this video i'm going to share what are my thoughts about this fork this new fork of the flutter and why did I choose at some of the places, why I didn't choose it at some of the places, and in our own startup as well. So buckle up, this video is going to be fun, interesting. We're gonna see some of the hot takes onto this one, and if you haven't yet subscribed, do subscribe to the channel. I bring up a lot of coding videos, tutorial videos, and these kind of hot trends which are around there. So subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comment section, are you interested in mobile dev? Have you ever built even a single mobile app yet? And this is going to give you an idea in the comment section that how many are there actually mobile developers, especially focused in India. There are very less, and uh, I'll share some of the incidents as well as we go through in the video. So. I recently saw this tweet while I was traveling for a, one of the guest lecture in IIT Hyderabad. It was a nice one as well. Uh, so I saw this and I immediately bookmarked. Uh, this is a really nice uh, one. So notice here it says, right now it's me because, okay, let me give you the context. So there's this website uh, which says flutterfoundation.dev and they're very serious and they say we are forking Flutter, this is why. And we're gonna read this together, I'll share my thoughts and everything. So a bunch of folks, really interesting and high-end developers, they came and said, hey, enough is enough. We're gonna just take the things in our hand and we'll be responsible for developing Flutter in the way we want it, in the direction where we want to go. And one of the main lead guy who actually wanted to do this is Matt, and he is a Flutter maximalist. And again, that's a really nice one. Uh, so again, I really wanted to know who is we behind the flock. They call this uh, this fork as flock. A really nice name. Too many F's there. Uh, it says right now it's me and Jesse uh, with some ongoing conversation with a few other who haven't yet decided what level of involvement they are interested in. So that's really nice take. So right now the team is not that big. It's just two people, but that's how everything starts. That hey, uh, we are just two folks. Eventually they become 20 and 200 and whatnot. Let's read this because this has some of the hot takes, interesting takes. By the way, also want to mention that a lot of times, especially in India, you're gonna see a lot of enthusiastic developers on the Flutter saying that Flutter is the ultimate solution for everything. Whatever you want to build on mobile, no core iOS app, no core Android app, no React Native app, the solution is always Flutter. And you're gonna hear this mostly from the GDGs, the Google Developer Group. So these are the folks who are mostly in the college and are backed by Google. They are responsible for hosting some of the events in India, and that's why they are seen always praising Google, Not don't want to listen to anything, don't want to even see what's their other side of that. So again, uh, I don't really mind uh, them, but also you need to take their opinion with a fine grain of salt, Obvious reasons, GDGs. So if somebody is telling it from the industry who is not a part of GDG, then I'll uh, take the opinion. But most of the noise that you see in India are definitely from GDG groups. Again, not so it's not bad, but it is the truth. All right. So let me walk you through with this. Uh, this is a really, really interesting and juicy uh, article. So let's just read this together. So over the year, Flutter has attracted millions of developers, no doubt about it. This is one of the fantastic thing about the Flutter that they were able to attract millions of developers. Uh, before that, it was not that of a high tech. Yes, there were technologies like Ionic and all of that, but Flutter actually just blew them out of the water. Uh, who built user interface across every platform? Uh, Flutter began as a UI toolkit for mobile, iOS, and Android only. Then Flutter added support for web. Finally, Flutter expanded to Mac, Windows, Linux. So it's it's expandive, expanding massively, and again, for obvious reason. But still, the majority of the people who use Flutter are for iOS and Android. There are a few exceptions, like some of my friends' companies, like Pieces. They use Flutter, not Flutter, rather Dart for doing everything there. But again, uh, so again, 
Across this massive ex expansion of scope and responsibility, the Flutter team has only marginally increased to size. This is a point of concern. Again, Google is known for its graveyard. And one of the reasons why we didn't choose for our startup uh, Flutter because it was a good thing. Uh, Flutter is good. We, whatever we wanted to build, it was there. It was nice UI and everything. But what we were worried about, first of all, it's a very niche technology in itself. Dart, you have to go through with a new programming language. And the developers who are Dart programmer or are Flutter programmer are just Flutter programmers. So no sharing of the resource, no usage of the resource uh, or the developer into other area of the segment. So that is one of the concern for majority of the people who are in the industry. And if a scope is getting that much massively expanded, it is expected from any sane company that you will be increasing your developer team size as well. Because there is a dedicated team who will be working on mobile, let's just say Android and iOS. But if you're adding support in the same ratio, it is expected. And if you're Google, it is expected that you will be increasing your team size. But everybody was worried about that, that, hey, what is happening? Why the team size is not expanding? Rather expanding, it was shrinking. Yep, that is also a news. To help expand Flutter's available labor and accelerator development, we are creating a fork called Flutter, a fork of Flutter called Flock. Interesting choice of name, Flock. <laughs> Again, there are a lot of interesting things that you could have done, but Flock, that's nice. Flutter's labor shortage. Let's do some back of the napkin maths. I love them because they are always uh, exaggerated and always like that. So how many Flutter developers exist in the world today? Uh, my guess is that it's on the order of million, I guess? Million developers. The real number is probably higher, but one million should be reasonably conservative. All right, one million developers, pretty good. I think there are more, but eh. How large is the Flutter dev team? Uh, Google doesn't publish this information, but uh, my guess is the team size is about 50 people strong. I guess for Flutter, 50 is too less of people developing it at the same time. Uh, but again, it's okay to have 50 team, but how does this correlate? How many people are using your product? You should be expanding on that number of size. For example, React Native is much, much highly used or React, in fact, is much higher. So there should be like 50,000 developers for developing React. I don't get it, but OK, OK, I'll get you. I'll play along. Uh, that's 50 people serving uh, the need of million. OK, it's not 50 people serving the need. It's their software which is serving. But again, uh, doing the little bit of division, that means that every single member of the Flutter team is responsible for the need of 20,000 uh, Flutter developers. That ratio is clearly unworkable by, OK. I don't get it. So if you're saying for this, again, if this is true, the same ratio should be there in the React world as well. If React is serving, let's just say, 10 million developers, then there should be at least 100,000 people working all the time in the React. How does this math work? I, I don't really get it. Again, that's my opinion on that. The labor shortage can always be fixed through hiring. Okay. However, due to company-wide issue at Google, the Flutter team headcount has frozen uh, since 2023. Okay. Uh, again, 2023, so it's been not much of a long. Uh, we learned a small number of layoffs. It seemed that the team now may be expanding again, although outsourcing through outsourcing, that's nice. Uh, but we are likely seeing, we are not likely to see the Flutter team double or quadruple anytime soon. Okay, I don't expect it to quadruple, but if you are expanding the scope, I definitely 100% on the side that some expansion on the team should happen. Some newly talented developers should be part of this score as well. And if Google is saying too much about that, hey, we are using it all the way in, all of our apps and all of that, there should be an aggressive development on that. Not too aggressive, like, but at least a little bit of that. Uh, to make matter worse, Google's corporate refocus on AI. Oh, this is this is where I get get you that, okay. Uh, yes, I do agree that a lot of focus of Google, and not only Google, a lot of company focus is now going towards AI because LLMs are making a lot of big noises. So obviously, uh, a lot of core corporate focus is going there. So I get you on that. This is part where I get that. As we speak, the Flutter team is in a maintenance mode for three of its six supported platform. Desktop is quite possibly the greatest untapped value of Flutter, but it's mostly stagnant. See, desktop is not easy to develop. It's not that easy. And I think it will take a lot of time, Flutter, to actually solve this problem. We would love to just ship one code and produce for every single platform, but that's like a, a developer's heaven garden. It, it's not that easy. 
I am super happy that now we have just one single code base and we can do like 80 to 85 percent of the task for mobile development with one code base. And again, it's not 100 percent of the task. It's 80 to 85 percent only. Still, you have to tap in a little bit of the tweaks needs to be done for iOS and Android, but it's it's mostly done. And ability to do like 90 percent of my task and I can ship the app for Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, Linux, desktop. It's too much. Um, we are not yet there. The cost of limited labor. Limited labor comes at a great cost for a toolkit that has rapidly expanded its user base along with this overall scope. Okay, I get it. Uh, with so few developers to work on tickets, many tickets linger in the backlog. Okay, I get this point. We need more team members on the Google side, so I get that. The Flutter community can help with labor. Okay. Flutter has two very valuable qualities. First, it's open source. I agree on that. So any developers can uh, can see how any part of Flutter is implemented and can even change it. Second, the Flutter framework is written in the same language as Flutter apps. Yeah, that, that's nice. Because of these two quality, experienced Flutter developers and package developers can contribute to the core framework itself. Okay, that's nice. How many Flutter developers exist in the world today who are capable of contributing at a productive level of Flutter framework? Hmm, that's nice. Okay, let's. Um, I'm okay with that. I get the idea. Uh, why not work directly with the Flutter team? Hmm, that's that's interesting. I would love to read that. If increased external contributions in the path to bet to be to a, a better Flutter uh, Flutter word, then why fork Flutter when everyone could just work directly with the Flutter team? Yes, exactly. That's a good question. You, if you are so good in, uh, you could have just contributed. That's the whole thing. It's a tempting proposition to set up a concrete effort to contribute directly to Flutter. After all, the Flutter team regularly touts the number of external contributions that it rolls into every release. Yeah, everybody is aware of that. According to the Flutter public relation effort, they love all those external contributions. Who doesn't? Uh, but sadly, trying to work with Flutter team delivers a different reality. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, while some developers have had success working with the Flutter team, many other developers have found it frustrating. It's unworkable. Ooh, welcome to the Google. Uh, there are no doubts a number of factors that contribute to the result. Different developers will, dif will experience different issues, but here are some of them. Okay, limited review labor. Of course, the amount of PRs that are coming in there's always going to be a shortage in any platform. Look at the other things like uh, AppWrite and all those. It, it takes time. The developers who doesn't have enough time to write code are the developers tabbed to review contributions. Therefore, it can be longer to review the updates. Uh, uh, the time crunch also seems to be lend itself to uh, continuous, contagious. Oh, that's nice. I would love to know that. Okay, uh, causing likely. I, I do that a lot of time. Controversial. Uh, review conversations. Okay. Everything takes forever and it's always seems to be about non-critical details. For example, I would love to see a PR where this is happening. Uh, communication monoculture. Ah, that's nice. Uh, most of the team seems to expect a certain way of communicating which doesn't match the variety. Oh, this happens. This happens a lot because Flutter is internally developed in Google. So there is a way of communication which are taught in the very first month and how everybody does that. It seems like everybody does this way. But when you move into different companies and work there, then you realize this is not the way of communicating. And communication can happen in different ways. So people who are possibly working in the Google are accustomed to work in the high-end companies only and they know that this is the way of communication is a big problem and that's why the things like Jira and Slack they make millions and billions of dollars because communication is a pain to solve all right so I get this I get this but I'm still not convinced introducing uh, flock you can go ahead and read of that we described flock as flutter plus oh that's nice uh, is this a moment like C with classes, C++, so we can call this flock as Flutter Plus. Flutter Plus Plus would have been much better of a name. And you could have taken this entire thing. Hey, if you're watching this video, go ahead and change the name flower from flock to Flutter Plus Plus. I think you're gonna you're gonna get much more PR on that and you'll attract much more talent. Call it Flutter Plus Plus. Okay, uh, moving on. By forking the Flutter, we get decided uh, what gets merged. We won't lower the quality bar, but by controlling merger decision, Okay, so this is more about faster merging. That's what I see. That's first advantage that I'm able to see as a clear picture as of now. How can you get involved? Okay. 
alpha test the flock. Okay, become a reviewer, become a lead. Okay, so a lot of things are going in. Go ahead, follow these guys on Twitter as well. But again, my recommendation is uh, that call this as Flutter++. Plus Plus. <laughs> You're gonna take this thing now. Okay, so what are my thoughts on this one? I think it's, it's a very experimental uh, thought as of now. It's just a thought as of now. I don't think so anybody should take it like too much seriously on this one, but this has potential because the people who are behind this thought are really great developers and they can really take it uh, on to the next level. Uh, but again, my initial question and still the question is why not just to help Flutter team in getting uh, the whole source code at one place, what's the need of this fork and where this fork will be uh, in 2025 by this time same that this one year is going to entirely decide that what direction we are moving in. But what's concerning here is, if the team size is getting that much of smaller in the Google, is Flutter really worth investing the time? Because a lot of people already have invested time in so many of the Google products and eventually doesn't give a good experience in that. But everything is gonna be decided with the time. So I'll say, take your time, don't hurry up in, ju in jumping into the new framework, take your time. And Flutter is not going anywhere, neither is React Native, but pick them wisely. Where the active development is happening, that's the deciding factor. Pretty fun update, and I'll keep you updating what's happening next. So that is it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.